Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about education, which is a subject very close to my heart. Uh, before I speak for the demand for grants for the Ministry of Education, I'd like to just uh, respond to some comments by the opposition, where they mentioned about uh, the division of budget over the number of students. I'd like to highlight here that, as was mentioned by members of the opposition, education is a concurrent budget item. <coughs> the concurrent subject and whatever budget is being spent by the central government is on central government institutions and not on state government uh, institutions and not on private institutions. So the number should be divided by students and faculty members and staff that are in central government institutions. And any drop in the number of schools, amount of budget that is being spent, I think every state is accountable to speak about it because schools are largely run by state governments and not by central government. So I think uh, we should be careful about how we attribute uh, blame. And I think in this changing world, it's very important for us to recognize what is the role of government. Is it to spend money only, or is it also to enable? I think we have, there's a balance between the both. It is to regulate, it is to create good policies for the growth of the education ecosystem, and for those who can afford it, providing high quality education. And for those who can't, I think the government should step in and. Uh, invest into the future of uh, such citizens of India. So with this uh, prefacing comments, I'd like to get into the demand for grants for the Ministry of Education. I'm only speaking about the Ministry of Education, not commenting on uh, the budget for skill development or entrepreneurship. And uh, I would like to get into specific points appreciating the government. I think overall, the budget has increased from about 1,12,000 crores to 1,20,000 crores over the last year. And I think that's about a 7% increase. Uh, we're beating inflation, but uh, as a fellow educator myself, I always hope that we are able to give more money to education, and I think that will keep happening. In going into specific issues, I think the Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan, uh, the increase of 11% from 8,300 crores to 9,300 crores, uh, is uh, reinstating this strong commitment to enhancing these quality schools in India. The PM uh, Shri program was mentioned. Uh, the budget has been increased from 4,000 to 6,050 crores from last year. And this is a strong commitment to enhancing the educational infrastructure and quality across India. Currently, about 10,855 schools have been impacted across 763 districts. And there's a target of uh, impacting more than 14,500 schools through this program. I'd like to also uh, appreciate the STARS program uh, budget, which is uh, largely to improve teacher effectiveness through specialized teacher training. And uh, right now we've got about uh, 3,75,000 schools impacted, 15 lakh teachers uh, trained through this program, and about 4,40,000 crore students who have benefited across six states. I mentioned this in my uh, speech on the budget, uh, and uh, I think I'd like to mention it again here on education. I'd like to specifically appreciate uh, the e-vouchers being provided to about 1 lakh students every year to secure loans of up to 10 lakhs to pursue higher education in domestic institutions, and the 3% interest subvention on student loans. On higher education, a subject very close to my heart, the budget has increased uh, by 8% uh, since last year. And two aspects in particular, the budget to world-class institutions uh, like the Institutes of Eminence has increased by 20% from 1,500 crores to 1,800 crores this year. And the support to central universities has increased by a, a large 38% from about 11,500 crores to close to 16,000 crores now. Uh, the one thing I'd like to request here, sir, is uh, while the allocation has increased overall, the budget uh, for the Central University of Andhra Pradesh and the Central Tribal University of Andhra Pradesh, which are subjects of the AP Reorganization Act, have been subsumed into the larger support to central universities. I request that the budget, whatever has to be allocated to these two specific universities in Andhra Pradesh, um, continue um, as expected in the Act, and uh, we are supported to establish them as soon as possible. I'd like to then go over the uh, achievements of NDA over the last 10 years. I think one of the foremost things uh, has been the new education policy that was announced uh, about four years ago. And various aspects of implementation are between the states and the center. There's a huge responsibility uh, on the state governments, on the central government, to really see this into reality. Because the language of the NEP, uh, uh, as an educator myself, is something that I'm really looking forward to seeing in reality. 
What are the achievements of uh, the uh, central government speakers uh, of the government and uh, representing the BJP have spoken also about the number of universities that have increased from 700 to 1100, number of colleges that have increased from 37,000 to 44,000, the number of central government institutions, the institutes of national importance have doubled from 75 to about 149 in 2020-21 and more have come in the last two, three years. The educational outcomes uh, have been spoken by speakers before me, but I'd like to reinstate my appreciation for the increase in women enrolled uh, from 1.5 crores to 2.1 crores, close to 2.1 crores, uh, indicating a 32% jump in women enrollment. And the ratio between male and female students in higher education is 1 to 1.01. Uh, so that's a fantastic uh, improvement, and that means that more women are actually coming into education than before. And I appreciate the government's efforts in achieving that. The seventh pay that was implemented in uh, 2016 for faculty and teacher salaries and staff salaries across institutions in the state and the center, I think has uh, done a great job in making education an attractive employment opportunity for citizens of India. Uh, we run a private university and we pay salaries and we are uh, constantly competing with government institutions on attracting talent. And we still uh, fight for talent vis-a-vis uh, -vis those who go to institutions like the IITs and the IIMs. And I think the benefits that the government provide and the stability that the government provide really attract high quality talent into educational institutions in the government. The private sector is growing. Uh, as was mentioned, about 50% of the students and faculty are in private sector institutions. But I fear that many private institutions are not able to recruit faculty at the quality that the government institutions are able to. Another measure that has come uh, about a decade ago is the NIRF, the rankings for institutions across the country. And now I think it's made a very clear race uh, for institutions everywhere that if you want to recognize, you want to uh, get recognition, you want to get access to funding, you need to do well on these rankings. I want to request uh, the government to pay more attention to this one aspect where I think we've reached a good place now, but uh, I'd like it to become more qualitative in the future so that uh, there are some metrics which reward you for uh, quantitative growth, which is good, but uh, once we've reached some quantitative level of success, I think the emphasis on quality, whether it be the quality of publications, the quality of PhD, is going to be the next level for NIRF to lead institutions to the global rankings. There are some institutions in the global 200 uh, uh, rankings uh, from India today. There can be many more. I think we're well uh, underway in that direction. I think the evolution of NIRF is going to help us uh, get in that uh, direction. Coming to some uh, uh, requests, sir, uh, for our uh, state uh, to, uh, to begin with. The Ministry of HRD has, uh, sir, I'm the only speaker from my uh, party, so I think we have about 20 minutes. Seven minutes. Not more than seven spoke, but I, I think our party has about 20 minutes. Okay, sir, take one more minute, fine, yeah. finish. The, uh, uh, for the state of Andhra Pradesh, for a university in my parliament, Andhra University was uh, committed to provide about 1,000 crores over the Rusa Rashtriya Uchitar Siksha Abhyan program. And we've received some money in phase one and phase two uh, to the tune of 20 and 100 crores. The previous state government has not uh, paid its share and hence further devolution of funds haven't happened. So my request is that uh, the state is in a bad shape. Uh, this program should continue to support Andhra University. And the Rusa overall has increased to uh, 1814 crores uh, this year for such state universities across the country. I appreciate the intention of the government to uh, keep taking that uh, forward. Uh, again, coming back to the Central University, the Central Tribal University of Andhra Pradesh, the IIM, IIT, NIT, uh, ISER, all central government institutions, many of which are in various stages of completion. I request the uh, uh, Ministry of Education and the government to continue allocating funds in a speedy manner and whatever uh, support is needed from the state government, we will provide it. I'd like to highlight the Central Tribal University in particular where a campus was allocated in my parliament uh, during uh, our regime between 14 to 19 in the state when Mr. Chandrababu Naidu was the chief minister. But the previous state government had uh, created a lot of confusion, tried to move it uh, to a very different area where they didn't allocate the land fully and the campus didn't start. And the request from the staff of the Central Tribal University is to come back uh, to the campus that was allocated in uh, Kotavalsa Mandal in my parliament where the 500 acres of land has already been uh, allocated. Um, I'd like to end with recommendations to uh, the, uh, the government on 
certain points. One is the One Nation, One Subscription initiative where you give access to journals to institutions across the country. If the central government can get that access, I think institutions around the country will benefit. Uh, integrating social and emotional learning into the in Indian curriculum and encouraging alternative education models is critical for, uh, because we're seeing mental health challenges grow across the country and I think that support is essential for our education to change. Uh, giving more support to repairs and maintenance, I see that government institutions are suffering from lack of repairs and maintenance budgets. And lastly and most importantly, uh, I'd like to request for a budget on research on how outcomes of school education, outcome of higher education are, are changing. What's happening? Are government school students going to colleges? Are college students getting jobs? We need to track them maybe by, via the Aadhaar, create a national database and change the way we invest money into education because with the advent of AI, with the advent of technology around the world, the jobs are changing and our education system doesn't seem to be equipped enough to face those changes. I request the center to invest into that research and change the way we invest our money for the future. Thank you for this opportunity, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sunil Kumar, honorable member, Sunil Kumar.